Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My name is Cameron. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Mitch, and I use he, him pronouns. And tonight, we're here to share with you another in the um, FLX Pride Revived Craft Night series. And today, we're going to be showing you how to do um, some rainbow slice and bake cookies. We're really excited about it. Welcome to our new kitchen. And she's the professional, so <laughs> I'm going to let her take it away. Cut. Boop, 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 ba -doop, boop. All right, how does that work for you? That looks good. Perfect. All right, go for it. All right, so to start, we're going to take our one and a half sticks of butter, and um, it should be room temperature. Mine's a little bit cool, <laughs> but we'll work with that. Um, and you just want to work that until it's a little bit soft um, and then we will add our two-thirds of a cup of packed brown sugar so i have one third of a cup already here and i'm just going to show you real quick to pack brown sugar you want to take your bag and your cup and scoop as much brown sugar overflowing into the cup as you can and then just take it on the side of the bag and squeeze it in there and then rub your hand on the side to sort of level it out so you get a mostly level cup and then plop it right in great test for little yes um so then you just want to take that and the sugar is gonna help you beat the butter into a nice big fluffy light mixture it is going to take some time um you'll notice our mixer in the background here if you have one and you want to use it hand mixer or stand mixer that's fine but this hand mixer works just as well it just might take a little bit more time Do you want me to take a turn? Yes. This can all be cut out, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> Editable content for Amy. <laughs> Sing Amy a song. So we were gone for about five minutes. Um, you do want your butter to be a little bit warmer than mine was. Um, we ended up having to heat it up a little bit. Um, so you just want to let your butter sit out on the counter for about two hours before you start this recipe. Um, but eventually with some elbow grease or machinery grease, um, you will get a nice light fluffy mixture like this. And that's exactly what you're going for. Um, so next, we are going to work in our one egg and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So we go one egg. And you want to make sure that you're cracking the egg on the counter and not on the side of a bowl because cracking it on the side of the bowl is going to push eggshells back in and that's how you end up with eggshells in your cookies, which you really don't want. You can also crack an egg into a separate container before you put it right in with the butter and sugar if you're really worried about shells. That's how my mom always made me do it because she didn't trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just any vanilla extract. This is um, Watkins brand clear vanilla. Um, but what's also fun about this recipe is after Pride Month is over, you can take the same recipe and adapt it. You can put different flavorings in, maybe peppermint, and roll it in some crushed peppermint instead of the sprinkles that we're going to do. And that'll be a nice, fun Christmas cookie flavor. Or maybe some, like, you could throw some cinnamon in there and do some pumpkin spice. It's a very versatile recipe, and it's also very fun. So 
once you get that all nice and incorporated, it's gonna look almost the same. <laughs> um, but this is the point where you have to stop sneaking tastes because it's got raw egg in there. Dang it. <laughs> um, so once we are done with that. Food safety always. Yes. Um, we do our quarter teaspoon of salt into the flour. And that's a quarter teaspoon, not a quarter tablespoon. Yes. There is a difference. You also can end up using less if you do use salted butter. It's just to how salty you like your sweets. Yes, but you always want to make sure there's at least a little bit of salt because that really helps bring out the sweet flavor. So we're going to add this flour in about two batches. Um, just sort of mixing very gently as we go because you don't want to work it too much or else you're going to get a tough dry cookie and that's not what you want so it's almost completely mixed in you can only see a few little dry patches of flour and that's when we're going to add in our second addition So it is going to be sort of wet and sticky um, and not really feel like you should be able to slice and bake it eventually, but um, once you set it up in the fridge and let it chill, then it um, that butter hardens right back up and you uh, will be able to do what you need with it. Um, but right now is where we're going to get into the fun parts of it. So the recipe I'm using calls for you to split the dough in half and make two separate logs. Um, and so I'm going to use my two separate logs to show you a couple different variations on how you can make this dough at home. Wait. Do you still want this over here? Do you want me to move it back over here? I do want it over here still. Okay. And you can cut this out too. Yes, you can. So talented. Editing okay. wizard. Stamina. <laughs> can you see my reflection in the bowl? No, oh, that would have been fun. Oh, these bowls? Oh, yeah, there you are. Hello! <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> okay, so, um, can you actually go in there and find that arrow root search? Yes. Perfect. So, another note that I want to make is, um, Mitch and I are using a gluten-free flour blend because we have um, allergies to gluten. Um, so ours is probably going to be a little bit stickier than yours will be, just because we don't have um, the benefits of gluten holding our dough together. Um, so yours will likely be sticky, but not quite this sticky. Um, but you still will need a little bit of extra flour and maybe even gloves. Um, depending on how messy you want to get, just to help you um, stay a little bit neater and work a little bit easier. So I'm going to have my lovely Mitch uh, unravel some that wrap for me. So we're going to use plastic wrap. to wrap our little cookie log in. Um, you can put it on the counter, please. 
But before we do that, um, like I said, this is the gluten-free flour and it's very fluid, if you will. Yours will probably stay in a nice log. Um, but before we chill this, we are going to take our little paper plate and I'm using these non-Pareil style sprinkles. They're just rainbow sprinkles. You can also use like the Jimmy shape kind. Um, I didn't open these. You can do like the cute little shapey guys too, right? Yeah. yeah. They Whatever just might be got. a little bit more sticky outy. True. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do is just take them and pour them out onto a plate or a tray. Um, and then and then just take your log of dough. And it's just a floppy plate. It is a floppy plate. And then roll your cookie log in those sprinkles, doing everything you can to cover all of it. If you would like us, there's an optimistic Labrador retriever who's willing to deal with any rogue sprinkles we might lose. Oh, yes. But definitely a bigger tray might make it a little bit easier. Yeah, but there Ooh. is what your cookie log may look like. Oh, we do have a little bolt about there. Yeah, there's a couple. Here. Gotta add more sprinkles. Okay. More sprinkles. <laughs> We're shooting a video. Cinematics. <laughs> Cinnamon photography. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, buddy. All right. So now. We're going to take our plastic wrap and transfer our little dough log over to the plastic wrap. And this is where you can um, use this plastic as your tool to help you get the perfect shape of your dough log. So you want to wrap it completely and then hold one side and then twist with the other side to get basically like a dough sausage. It's a cookie dough sausage. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you just want to form it so you have a nice round log all nice and wrapped up. And then you're going to pop that in the fridge for at least three hours before you bake so the butter has time enough to rest and cool back down and get nice and hard so you can slice it better. Why should you do the fridge and not the freezer? Um, the fridge just gives it a chance to cool completely down all through the, um, like all to the core of the dough log. Like you could put it in the freezer but then the outside would probably freeze completely by the time um, the inside got even like a little bit cold. And um, when you go to slice it and then bake it, then um, you won't have one even temperature throughout the log. And that's going to make the cookie bake off kind of weird. Um, and the inside will like burn before the outside gets like cooked just because it's so frozen on the outside. If you were though to keep it in the freezer, say overnight or long term, would they then bake evenly from frozen? Yes. 
So um, you want to do at least three hours in the refrigerator, um, but you can do up to five days in the fridge before you slice them and bake them. And then you can also store an unbaked log in the freezer for up to three months before the cookies would kind of turn and not have the same texture and flavor. Um, so slice and bakes are also a really nice cookie to just have on hand. Have a log of dough in your freezer, slice a couple off, and then you've got a nice cookie treat. All right, so how do we want to do colors? Do you want to use the metal so it doesn't stain, or do you want to use those because we can help? I think I want to use these. Okay. <laughs> so like we'll do one in here, and maybe one in there, and then we'll do the other colors here. Now we have a plethora of paper plates because we just moved and for um, ease of cleanup for the next step we're going to go ahead and use those um, but you can use of course like different bowls for what is my favorite part of baking anything with Cameron during Pride Month <laughs> and that is what? Rainbows! Yeah buddy! Um, so we're just going to split our dough into seven equal portions, or as equal as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be what you want it to be. Equity, not equality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so dork. Alright, that's only six. <laughs> well, my <bad. laughs> No orange for us. Well, no indigo. Oh, true. So All right, we're just going to do six equal portions because indigo is a fiddly color. I see and appreciate indigo. I have a beloved friend named indigo, and I have a beloved French bulldog puppy that I know now named I'm, indigo. That's fair. But I'm, indigo is I not going to be represented in this cookie. <laughs> and that is okay. okay. But right. we still acknowledge it's exist. So we have our food coloring. Um, this is a fancy set because I'm a professional pastry chef and I like to treat myself <laughs> with fancy food coloring. But even just the drops from the grocery store are going to be fine. Um, it's a nice way also to play around with learning like color theory and um, just learning stuff and having fun while you're having fun baking already. Um, so we're just going to do a drop or two. These are very potent colors as well so we're not going to need as much for them. Um, but with your regular drop food coloring, you might need a little bit more. But actually, yeah, let's, let's have fun with color theory. And instead of using the orange, we'll just do crimson and yellow. Crimson and yellow. We're going to have to do that for green, too. Yeah. So green, you're going to want to use your blue and yellow. And you can switch it up. I highly recommend using just a little bit of blue and a lot of yellow if you want that like true like leaf green. Yes. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a darker green, which is also gonna be gorgeous. But yeah. And then for purple, we're gonna use blue and pink, just because red food coloring sort of makes sort of like a muddier, darker red than pink yeah, does. Yeah, it's more burgundy than purple. Yeah. Great. Right, and now we're gonna get mixing. Woohoo! These are mine. Haha. <laughs> Go for it. I want some. I should have done yellow first, but I'm a silly. Yes, you are. Well, I thought I was doing red, and this turned out to be worse. We're all silly here. Blue and orange are complementary colors, so it worked out. They're also the Syracuse option <laughs> They sure are, and uh, Penny and School District. It's blue and orange. Yeah. Um, another tip for you, 
Um, if you are baking with regular flour, you want to try and do this um, with as little mixing as possible, just because it is going to get that tough, um, unappetizing kind of flavor. Go Mustang. Can I do green? Because I have blue on my hand already. Sure Thank can. You. And it's very important to use like a clean glove or a different spoon or spatula to mix all the different colors. Unless you're going in order of related colors like Cameron and I are doing. Yes. She's now jumped to red and I've jumped to green. Um, this is an excellent green, Cameron. Good job. Thank you. Um, because that way you're going to keep the purity of your colors, what you want it to be, instead of ending up with um, brown cookie dough. Mood. And um, another thing is, just because of the general color of cookie dough, your colors are probably going to be a little bit more brown, tan. A lot of vanilla extract has that effect, which is why Cameron chose to use the clear. You can use, you know, your typical brown, just don't be surprised when it makes your colors just a little bit darker than they would be if you used clear. Yeah. Um, Purple. Smells so good. Also, too, um, I can hear my my sister's voice in the back of my head. You do have options to use like um, natural ways of coloring your yes. dough as well. Beet juice is a great way to make a really gorgeous pink. Um, Turmeric. If you use just a little bit, you'll get a nice yellow. Um, there's something called spirulina that will... Spirulina? Spirulina. Spirulina. Spirulina is what I'm going to call it now. <laughs> that'll give you like a really nice like shade of blue. So you do have that option if um, food colorings are a sensitivity for you, because I know they are for a lot of people. Yeah. You took the gloves. I did. I brought my bag, so... Well, because you need one for your yellow. Oh, I do. By Ruda Lina. <laughs> like Stella Lina. Yeah. Except not at all. You know what? I am not an expert smoothie maker. So how would I know? That's fair. I'm a novice smoothie maker at best. If you ever start bringing Spirulina into this house, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I've always wanted to try it. I like playing with color. That's half the reason I majored in art. <laughs> you can make a really, really nice um, purple-ish color with blueberry skins, but it's not the best. And avocados, believe it or not, make red. Avocado. Avocado. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. We've got bananas and avocados. Amy, please leave our meme talk out of this. <laughs> Amy can do what she wants. She can, but I made a request, which is why I said please. I said please. This looks like Plato. Go Wildcats. Wildcats. Everywhere. This is my high school. Um. So yeah, as you can see, this is the messy portion, but it's also fun. So if you've got kiddos, kiddos, yeah, not littles, but like kiddos yeah. who want to get a little bit messy, but also are able to stay a little bit cleaner. Um, and you've got gloves or 
Even like sandwich baggies? Yeah, that's a great idea. You can actually put the dough in a sandwich baggie, put the drop of color in there and close it, and they'll just squish it up really good. Yeah. Uh, here we fight with the plastic wrap. I'm just thinking of our 18 month old Nora and how she would yes. <laughs> have a lot of fun, but it wouldn't be so fun for her mom. <laughs> so definitely with little littles, um, better to observe at a distance. Correct. So yes. now I'm going to just take a little bit more of that flower. Uh, um, and now we're just going to take these and make a bunch. This is the gluten-free flour working. Um, make a bunch of little logs that are about the same. Like, especially if you didn't, like, use a scale and make sure that all of your dough was the same exact, like, weight and amount. They're not going to be the same, like, thickness, but you do want them to be the same length. gonna kind of play with it. Ooh. Yellow is coming up. You can pop that right on here. Oh. <gasps> Oops, excuse me. Yes, yellow here is definitely not as big as some of the other colors. But we'll make it the same length and stick it in there. You can tell who's the professional here. It's not. <laughs> And I'll grab the red. I do wish I had put just a little bit more color in there, but it'll be fine. Is that pretty? And then we're just gonna do the same exact thing we did with our first more basic log. Wrap it up and sausage it up. And we've got this beautiful swirl of colors. You can see at least just a little bit of every single color in there. Um, and same thing, we're gonna let this chill for at least three hours before we come back and slice it up and bake them. So we'll see you, by the magic of editing, we'll see you in a couple seconds, but we'll be back to finish these in three hours. We are unwrapping our beautiful dough sausages. <laughs> um, so this is what they look like after about four hours in the fridge. They're nice and solid. That butter has firmed right back up. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we have our cutting board and a knife and I am an adult, so I am fine to cut these myself with this nice sharp kitchen knife. But um, when you're making these, you should definitely make sure to have a responsible person around to help you cut the cookies safely because this is hard dough and a sharp knife. And a sharp knife is a safe knife, but it's still better to let an adult handle the knives. Yes. Um, so then our oven is preheated to 350 degrees and then I have our cookie rack, uh, cookie pan already with some parchment paper, but you can just use like a pan spray and spray it really well just to make sure that the cookies don't stick. So I'm going to sort of fudge a little because we're only going to make a dozen cookies. So we can still save some of them. So I'm going to make half of each log. Um, so just kind of approximately cutting right down the middle. And then there's that beautiful cross section of the sprinkle one. And then I'm excited for this one. here comes the rainbow 
Ooh, yeah. So pretty cool. gorgeous. Yay. All right, so then we are going to take these other two halves and wrap them back up, and we're going to stash them in our freezer so we can have cookies later. Um, but for now, a good way to make sure that you're getting like even cookies is to take your logs and just kind of keep cutting them in half until you get, um, I think these size logs are going to get us about eight cookies potentially. Um, the cookies that you make with the regular like wheat flour should probably allow you to get more like 12 cookies and it all really depends on how uh like wide the bigger the diameter of the log the bigger cookies you'll get so the less you're gonna get um so it really just kind of depends Hmm, maybe we can cut these in three. Okay, yep, perfect, never mind. We are gonna get 12. So then you put them on the baking sheet and you just wanna do them in a three by four pattern on your standard size cookie sheet. To give the cookies adequate room to spread because they are going to spread a little bit they won't spread too much because they're going in, into the oven pretty much straight from the refrigerator um but and that's what you want you want them to go in cold um because that will allow them to not spread too much and still stay kind of like soft and chewy and not super tough and crispy. Unless you want tough and crispy cookies, then you will have to give them a little bit more room to spread and also let them warm up a little bit more. So cute. Oh yeah, I love these guys. They're so cute. I'm actually going to do a little bit of cookie surgery because I cut that one at an angle. <laughs> so we're just going to add on a little bit extra to fix the thickness of this cookie. <laughs> Cookie surgery. Cookie surgery. All right. And then you want to put them sausage inside down so they're nice and pretty on top. So I'm going to do a little bit more cookie surgery because my end piece is a little bit thin. That is another nice thing about this dough. It's very forgiving. So we are going to take these and pop them in our preheated oven for about 10 to 12 minutes um, and then we will come back and see what they look like after they're baked. My elbow! Oh, sorry. All right, we have some delicious baked cookies. Um, so you pull them out. Ours took about 12 minutes. Um, and that was the perfect amount of time to get them nice and set, but still kind of soft in the middle. And then you can especially tell on the plain cookies that beautiful golden brown bottom. That is the mark of a perfectly baked cookie. Um, so what you want to do is give them about five minutes on the pan to cool and set further 
and then you transfer them to a cutting board or a cookie rack to cool the or a mitch belly, or a mitch's mouth yes <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the glamour shot on camera. ASMR with my floppy hair. I know. Mm -hmm. I so know you're going for the you. sprinkles. Yeah. So good. Yeah. It's kind of shortbread ish, mm -hmm. but it's not a shortbread cookie. Yeah, you still get a little bit of the lift from that egg, but because there's no baking powder or baking soda in it, you don't get that really big puff. So it's just kind of the perfect to melt in your mouth. Buttery, delicious cookie. So good. Just really enjoying cookies. Um... Thank you so much for watching our craft night um, and thank you for participating in FLX Pride Revived. Be sure to show us your cookie creations online using the hashtag FLX Pride Revived, mm -hmm. um, also on our Facebook page, and we can't wait to see what you do. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Pride! Happy Pride!